Paris fell to Hitler's troops, a silent city whose gaiety and laughter would be stilled by four long years of German occupation. It was Hitler's crowning triumph, the fulfillment of a dream. At Compiègne, northeast of Paris, the humiliated French delegation received Hitler's terms of surrender. It was June 19, 1940. At the end of the First World War, in the same railway car, the Germans had surrendered to French commander Foch who had demanded stiff payments from Germany for the damages caused by the war. But now it was Hitler's turn. While many French leaders had fled, others who remained behind welcomed the occupation, preferring peace on Hitler's terms to the death and destruction of war. But the conditions imposed upon France were crippling the nation was required to pay 400 million francs a day during the occupation while turning over to the conquerors two-thirds of its land and 80% of its natural resources. In addition, French Jews and other undesirables were to be surrendered to the Nazis. As allies of the Germans, the French were permitted to govern their people from Vichy in the south, though their army and their navy were now under German control. The overseas possessions of France were to be divided among the Axis powers, with Indochina presented as a token of gratitude to Japan. Hitler, it seemed, was unstoppable. In nine short months, he had seized control of almost the whole of Europe. And now with France on its knees, he was ready to finish the job. While the band played Germany's national anthem, Hitler pranced on the soil of France, savoring the revenge that many of his countrymen had longed for since their defeat in the First World War. Hitler promised the French that his troops would remain in France only as long as England continued to wage the war. And on that day in 1940, both the Germans and the French were certain that England would soon surrender. 